morning, CCH family. It's good to be back here with you this morning. Uh, before we get started, let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you, and Lord, we thank you for just allowing us to wake up this morning, Father, Lord, giving us another day, Lord. We thank you for this time that we get to spend with you, Lord, with each other. Um, I pray that you just open our hearts and our ears, Lord, to what you've given today, Lord. Um, we just list, lift this time up to you, Father. It's in Jesus Christ's me, name we pray. Amen. All right. So um, lately, uh, Brandon and I have been watching this series called The Chosen. Um, I know a few of you out there have been watching it. Um, if, if you're not, you definitely should check it out. Um, anyways, a new episode just came out again this last week, and, and we were watching it, and there was a scene in it that really just... Uh, just caught my eye and spoke to me. Um, so a side note, if you are watching The Chosen and you have not watched episode six, um, spoiler alert, I'm going to be talking about it. So <laughs> I'm going to let you decide what to do. Anyways, uh, first thing I do want to share is that the scene that, that I'm going to be sharing about um, is not biblical. It's nowhere found in the Bible, but like a lot of of movies and shows, they kind of add some extra things in. But I feel the situation that's presented, I feel like a lot of us or some of us have um, been in that same situation. So that's what I'm, I'm going to share about. So um, in, in this episode, there was a scene with Mary Magdalene and kind of a a backdrop to it is, you know, after Jesus saved her from the seven demons, you know, she joined them um, and was with the group as they traveled. Um, and there was an encounter that occurred that kind of got her a little shaken up. And at one point she left the group and um, kind of fell into some of her old ways. Um, and then, you know, Jesus sent um, Peter and Matthew to go find her. Nobody knew where she was. And so eventually they brought her back. And so the part in this scene that really spoke to me is when Mary goes into the tent with Jesus and, and she's full of shame, like she cannot even lift her head. And uh, she's apologizing, I'm sorry I left, I'm sorry I did what I did. And um, she's just, it's so obvious, she's overwhelmed with shame. She's crying. Like I said, she can't lift her head. She wouldn't look at Jesus. Twice he said, look up at me, look at me. And she said, I can't, I can't, not after what I did. And he said, look at me. And she slowly looked up with her, with her eyes watered down, and, and he said, I forgive you. And... <clears throat> It made me think of the same way with us. You know, we're walking in our walk with the Lord, and we stumble. We, we get these hiccups, and sometimes it's things we say, things we do, um, things that we've done, uh, thoughts, you know, that make us feel so ashamed. We feel that we can't even go to the Lord. You know, how can I go to him? How can I talk to him after what I've done, what I've said, what I've thought? But when those times of shame come, we need to take that thought captive and remember what God's word says. In Psalm 103, verses 1 through 14, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy 
towards those who fear him. And this is what I want to point out. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. And so as far as the east is from the west, can that be measured? No, it just keeps going and going and going. That's how much we're forgiven, and that's how much he remembers our sins. The next time we have one of those moments, we need to remember that moment of shame where we feel we can't go to him. Remember his agape love, his unconditional love. There's nothing that we can ever do that will make him want to turn away from us. He died for all our sins, past, present, and future. Just remember, no matter how far away you get from the Lord, no matter what you do, he's only one step, one prayer, one conversation from you. We've been forgiven. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come before you again, Lord, and we thank you for being there for us to come to no matter what we've done. Lord, no matter how full of shame that we are, Lord, you are there, just like in that scene, saying, I forgive you, Lord, and we thank you for that, Father. We thank you for what you did for us on the cross, Lord. We thank you for your forgiveness, Lord, your mercy and your grace, Father. And Lord, we just uh, we just thank you for who you are, Lord, and the love you have for us, Lord. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>